Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, pre recently I posted my first impressions and my unboxing of the new M1 Mac Mini. Um, I've moved from a Hackintosh to this system, so I wanted to do sort of more of an in-depth comparison of the two, so that people who are maybe considering building a Hackintosh or going with the Mini, or if they've already got an existing Hackintosh and they want to see how it compares, I want to try and make that decision a bit easier for them and to see how everything fits in. So it's safe to say in the first video I was blown away with how well the Mac Mini performs um, and how quiet it is while it's doing all of that, which is really helpful for the stuff that I want to use it for. My Mac Mini is the obviously has the M1 chip and it has 16 gig of ram um, and the one terabyte ssd um, there's not really anything else you can customize so that's about it um, the hackintosh is a six core intel i7 i7 8700k um, with 32 gig of ram at 3200 megahertz and an amd rx 580 8 gig graphics card the 8700k was fairly high end when it debuted the rx 580 is more middle of the road graphics card so it'll be an interesting comparison um, obviously the mac mini doesn't have a dedicated gpu so it'll be interesting to see how close it can come on its own in this video, we're going to look at Geekbench, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, Handbrake, which is a video converting utility, and also Photoshop. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about why I think people who are saying that this Mac Mini can sort of replace Pro machines, are, or even asking that question, are kind of missing the point. Um, but yeah, we'll get to we'll get to all of that. Um, so specs-wise, we've already been through it. The Mac Mini is a M1, 16 gig of RAM, one terabyte SSD. The Hackintosh. 32 gig RAM, 8700K, 6 core CPU, which has an AIO liquid cooler, um, and the RX 580. The Hackintosh has a lot has a lot bigger cooling system. Uh, it's got about eight fans compared to the Mac Mini's one. Um, so that's one thing to take into consideration with all the results. So the first test I did was Geekbench, and I do think that Geekbench is quite easy for people to put the numbers up, but not actually talk about what they mean. So the first one I did was the CPU benchmark, which is basically indicative of real world performance, um, and basically it's fairly simple. The higher number, the better, and it gives you two scores, single core and multi core. Um, now on the M1 Mini, you can run it in both um, native ARM mode or compatibility mode on Intel. So I've run both just to have a look. And, and obviously on the Hackintosh, you can only do the Intel score. As discussed, I ran the test twice on the Mini and once on the Hackintosh. You can see on single core across the board, the Mini cleans up. Um, it's, com it's a comfortable winner here, which um, kind of backs up Apple's claim of having the world's fastest CPU core. Multi-core, it, it does beat it when it's running in its native mode. And it does come within the thousand points when it's running through Rosetta, which is still pretty impressive. Um, the GPU scores are not surprisingly, I guess, completely different. Um, the Hackintosh completely cleans up here, which is not surprising considering it has a de dedicated discrete GPU rather than the integrated one with the M1. This part of the Geekbench benchmark is supposed to show you how how your machine will perform with gaming, photo processing, and video editing, that kind of stuff. As we'll see later in the final cut test, there's more to it, I guess, than just than just numbers. So moving on to Logic Pro. Um, Logic Pro is Apple's sort of uh, audio production software. This is a very CPU intensive program, so I'm expecting the Mini to do quite well here. And in fact, the 8700K is a pretty powerful CPU as well. The audio is muted for this, but I'll leave a link to the benchmark if you want to try it out yourself. Um, it basically has a little instrument over a track and it starts off at 50 tracks and you just keep adding extra tracks and tracks until you get a system overload. Um, so I was able to get to 106 tracks on the Mac Mini and 104 on the Hackintosh um, before they started to overload. Um, so there's basically neck and neck. Uh, the Mini takes a slight edge. In CPU intensive tasks, the M1 can handle, handle itself against some of the top end Intel chips from only a few years ago, which is pretty good to see, to be honest, and I'm pretty impressed with the result. Um, Logic Pro is one of those things along with Final Cut that does draw people to the Mac and it's quite popular amongst the Hackintosh community quite a lot of people build machines purely to use Logic um, so it's good to see that they now have this option of the Mini if they want purely Logic performance um, so that's great so moving on to Final Cut Pro um, so I'm going to use the Bruce X benchmark so this is again something that's common among the Hackintosh community and just general Macs in general that is designed to show how um, it's designed to show how your GPU can cope I guess in this one a lower score is better and you can see that basically what it does it creates a timeline it creates a very high resolution timeline Timeline. It's 5120 by 2700 pixels and it's basically 24 frames per second um, and it's got a few titles that kind of thing So you can see from running it that the Hackintosh does edge out the Mac mini, but it's not very far apart um, It's not a huge difference and when you consider that the hack that Hackintosh has a dedicated GPU and the M1 Like I said is integrated. It's a pretty impressive result um, and for someone like me who's just making sm small YouTube videos It's more than enough for what I need so I'm pretty pleased with that again Final Cut Pro is something that is a big draw towards the Mac um, so it's very popular in the Hackintosh community again. So seeing the Mini perform so well in Final Cut. And this kind of speaks to what I was saying earlier, that the numbers that Geekbench was throwing out don't tell you the whole story. It doesn't take into account how well Apple optimized their apps for their silicon and for their machines. Um, they've always done a very good job with that with Intel CPUs. And now that they're using their own CPUs, I'd just expect that optimization to get <laughs> better and better really. So Handbrake is the next test we're going to do. Um, so Handbrake is a video encoding slash converting um, application. Um, and I found this benchmark on the Anantech forum, so shout out to the guy who came up with this. 
Um, it takes a LG video that is a 4K HDR sample that's used to sell TVs basically, and it converts it using one of Handbrake's presets. Um, so it's designed to kind of show you how your CPU would cope with long intensive tasks. Um, and so yeah, comparing the results, the Hackintosh takes quite a big win here. It's about 200 second difference between the, the times it took to convert. Um, this, again, this shouldn't be too surprising because the 8700K, the 8700K was a, was a high end CPU at the time. So what we're kind of seeing here is that the mini does struggle a little bit on the longer sustained loads. But one thing to note that while doing this, the Hackintosh becomes extremely loud um, and the Mini stays completely silent. Is there a bit more headroom to push the M1 a bit further if Apple let the let it heat up a bit more? Um, we don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, and also it's worth noting that the handbrake that I'm using on the M1, M1 Mac Mini, is a um, beta application that's designed for Apple Silicon. Um, so there's chances that they can optimize that further as well going in the future. But even at the moment, based on other results on the forum, it does place it around the i5-8400, that kind of processor. So that's still a pretty impressive result for such a small machine, I think. It's still outperforming the i3 processor that was in the previous base level Mac Mini that it was replaced. So they're still pretty encouraging to see. And it will be interesting to see if, as Handbrake gets out of beta, will they be able to get any more performance gains? Um, so we'll have to wait and see on that. The last benchmark that I ran was a Pudget Bench for Photoshop. Um, so there is a Photoshop version for M1, but it's only a beta. And I think most people are going to be running the Intel one still in Rosetta. So I've done it both in that and obviously the normal version for the Hackintosh. Um, interestingly, I did start this before on the Hackintosh. The mini kind of lapped the Hackintosh and finished the benchmark first, but the Hackintosh did score almost twice, the, twice as much as the mini. So this again kind of shows that I guess in sort of these sort of more heavy, longer sustained loads that the mini is not going to do as well. Um, um, so, but it does also sort of show that the mini is the mini is an entry level machine. It's not a pro machine by any stretch of the any, by any stretch of the imagination. But then also you got to look at what your workflow is. Like I'm not a pro user on Photoshop by any means, so I haven't noticed any slowdowns or anything, even running the Rosetta version. Um, so we got to take some of these we got to take some of these numbers, I guess, with a pinch of salt. So moving on to the conclusions and what did we learn from this? Um, not surprisingly, it's a bit of a mixed bag, all the results. Um, not everything is optimized for the Mini at the moment. When you look at all it's able to do on its all-in-one chip compared to something with a dedicated processors, that dedicated graphics card, that kind of stuff, it's impressive that it's even in the same ballpark in some things and beats it in others. Um, there's been a lot of excitement around the Mini and the M1 Max in general um, for their performance that they've shown so far. Um, and I do think there is quite a lot to be excited about, quite rightly so. But we can see there is room for improvement and we'll probably see that improvement in future sort of M2 MacBook Pros or you know, sort of the 16 inch versions, the iMacs, that kind of stuff, potentially that we might see in the future. In terms of what does what wins between the two, the Hackintosh or the Mini, um, I would say for me, if you have, if you need to run Mac OS, the Mini at the moment is a better package. Um, you get the full stability of being an actual Mac. So you don't have to worry about updates or USB issues, sleep, that kind of stuff. And you know, it's that classic Apple thing of it just works and it works exceptionally well. So for me personally, um, I'm moving away from the Hackintosh. The Hackintosh now, I'm just gonna use my Windows boot and use it purely as a gaming machine. Um, and the Mini will be what, I use for Final Cut, that kind of stuff. The Mini will become basically my daily driver. It'll have all my Final Cut stuff, everything, all my video editing and whatnot is gonna be done on the Mini. But yeah, I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, I think some people have missed the point when they look at, can this replace Pro machines? When you look at the machines that the M1 Max have replaced, it's clear that these are supposed to be low-end machines. Um, and I think that's absolutely fine. Um, and the performance for these low-end machines is amazing. Um, and I think that is the main point here. Stuff like 4K video editing, um, intensive audio production, that kind of stuff. It's no longer just for the pros. Um, this is for everyone now. Previously, only people with really expensive machines could do this kind of stuff. But now, you know, the MacBook Air starts at 999. The Mac Mini starts at 699. These things are starting to become more accessible to people. People, You can now take great 4K footage from your smartphones and with a reasonably priced computer, edit it comfortably and, you know, do whatever you want. You can start a business from it. You can start a YouTube channel. Um, the, opp the opportunities here are endless. Um, and yeah, so to quote Apple, really, this changes everything. Um, so if you like the video, give me a like and subscribe. That really helped me out. Um, and if you've got any thoughts on the M1, let me know down below. Um, I do plan on doing a few more videos about it. I'm going to try some gaming, that kind of stuff, and we'll see how we get on. Um, but if there's anything in particular you want to see about the M1 Max, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.